Hi everybody and welcome to my Unruly Housewife channel. Today I'm going to show you how to make this pretty Christmas napkin ring and um, it's got like a tiled effect around it in gold and uh, mine's holding paper napkin as you can see. I don't live in Downton Abbey <laughs> but um, you can use it for fabric ones. It's uh, one and a half inches wide. Um, I was looking it up and napkin rings generally are between one inch or one and a half inches so you could make it slightly smaller if you wanted to anyway I'm going to crack on and show you how I did it to make this project uh, you first of all need to make a ring and I've made a gold clay ring which I've measured I've sort of baked around um, a kitchen roll inner. That was I made a cardboard template like that and then using the template I cut out an oblong of clay. I didn't make a very complex join I just pushed it together and sort of smeared it in a little bit uh, because we are going to cover this with tiles so provided you cover the join with a tile you're going to be cool anyway. When I cooked it and I can't it's, I'm trying to force it back onto this but it really doesn't want to go. When I cooked it I used a foil pan on a tile and I just a ceramic tile and I just put this around there and popped it in the oven and I did it for 15 minutes 15 20 minutes initially just to harden it up so that I could move on to the next step of making my napkin ring and that was to create and apply the tiles I used um, the same gold clay which this time I put through at number three on my pasta machine. So that's uh, quite a lot thinner than this one. And um, the setting I had for this. And basically I made some little tiles by doing that. Now I'm going to do this quite untidily because I'm doing it quite quickly. I made the pattern. I then cut it out. Like that. Only a lot more neatly. <laughs> Once I've done that. I then added some Perfect Pearls mica powder. Now if you're using a lot of mica powder you'll want to wear a mask or something if you can or protect your face because it can get quite, um, it makes my nose sore. Okay and I covered the tile. I covered the tile in mica powder like that. Just catching the highlights really. I didn't want to go too much into the dips. Okay, so once I've got my tile ready, which we've already got here, we've got this one, which is really pretty. I sized it up to this. Now, I found, whoops, I sized it up to this. Now, I found that they were a tiny bit narrower than I wanted them to be. So I just gave them a little pull. I'm cheeky like that. And because I've got the mica powder on it, it sort of stops me from getting fingerprints into the clay and such, you know. And then I applied the tiles like this. Now I have a top tip or two coming up, so stay with it. Okay, I am then push this on and I want to get all the air out from underneath that tile. And then I just flip it round the corners. Now this isn't baked, so I'm being careful here. And I just smear it down almost really onto the edges. Takes a little bit of work. A bit more stretch maybe. Now once I think that is in place, I will make a list below of all the things that you'll need uh, for this project in, uh, in the description. When I think it's in a good place and I've got it down sufficiently I'll do two things to settle it in. One is I will use some coarse sandpaper to just texture the edge, which helps it to fit in. And you can always trim away because that flattens it down any excess with the knife. If you can see that. I'm not being terribly fussy while we're waiting. While we're, you know, while I'm demonstrating, um, so I'll do that to um, decorate the edge, make it all fit in. Okay, 
and then I will also find some sort of slim tool that I can use to just tidy up this little join. I just push that in there like that to tidy it up. I've not pushed them together as close as I normally would, but I think you get the general idea there. Yeah, that looks fine. And as you can see, that's quite quick to do. That is now applied. Now, <laughs> what I've neglected to do was to show you that I would put a smear of Fimo liquid or some sort of liquid clay. If you're using, I'm using Fimo, but if you are using... Um, uh, Primo, you might want to use TLS or something, something that bakes at the same temperature as your clay. Can't believe I forgot to do that. So um, that's what you would do. You'd put on a, a smear of, of clay, um, liquid clay here. Let's do that with the second one. Put on a smear of liquid clay. This time we're doing it properly. Add your time. Don't don't have it too thick. We don't want it squirting out of the sides. Add your tile. Um, now the reason I was distracted a moment ago was I was trying to uh, remember to tell you this sandpaper that I'm using to texture it. I had a problem with sandpaper because it's brilliant at texturing, but it does tend to. Um, some of the sand gets embedded in your clay and doesn't come back out. And um, what I'm trying here, and I think it's working, is to um, <coughs> excuse me, is to um, I painted the sandpaper with some Mod Podge, and I think the Mod Podge is keeping the sand in place. That's my theory. So here's our next tile. The one that hasn't got liquid clay under is probably going to be fine anyway. It's just annoying to me that I forgot to do it. But it's smeared in with all the others so it should be fine. And again I'm going to sort out that join. And now comes the rocket sciencey bit because we're going to need to apply our holly there. So we'll come back to this when we've got the holly ready back and here I am with the things I need to make my holly. I've got a holly cutter which is unfortunately a little bit too large. None of my holly cutters were the right size and some green and red glitter Fimo. So let's uh, get started and make the holly. I'm going to give this a little spritz for better or worse. I'm never quite sure with this one and press it down really hard onto the clay. I'm also going to press this button down because it's got like spines and things inside, whatever they're called, for the leaf veins for the leaves. Now if you don't have a holly cutter don't despair because I'm going to show you what to do about it. So there's my holly and it's as I say it's the wrong size, it's too big but it's the right idea. There it is. Okay. So let me cut this out. All I'm going to do is just trim it down. I'm just going to cut the uh, middle section out so that I'm left with three smaller leaves. You've got to be adaptable with crafting stuff because not everything is ever is all you know going to be the right size all the time. I nearly said nothing would ever be the right size, but that might be a little bit nihilistic. <laughs> okay. So there are my leaves and um, I would just uh, put a little dent in those. I'd flatten them a bit just to make them a bit more neat around the edges. Yeah, I'm going to spend a lot more time doing this than I am here. And then just pinch them in the middle to make them a bit more lively looking a bit. Now with the red clay obviously we're going to make our balls and make sure that the little um, berries I'm going to make sure that they're the right size for the holly leaves we don't want this to be too giant or too tiny and uh, you, you know how to do this I'm sure and now we assemble the holly and just literally put those bits together in, the, in their new size and shape 
have a little bit of a fiddle with it and add your berries to the middle. I hope you can see what I'm doing there. I have a bad habit of putting my hands in the wrong place. Let's pick those up. You'll probably be able to see. It doesn't take long to make them. Now, just in case you don't have any holly cutters, leaf cutters, I'm going to give you a new trick for sorting this out. And that is to cut out the shape of a leaf with a craft knife like that. And then just go ahead and go around the edge with a drinking straw. And the drinking straw cuts out this size of leaf from perfect little scoops to make your berry, um, your leaf. And then you can finish it off and put the veins on. Okay? Right, we've got our holly. I think now we'll go back to the um, ring. What I'm going to do now is to pop in the final tile. But the final tile has to be a bit smaller than the others because it's uh, it's not quite a regular amount that goes round. Sometimes you've just got to adapt, haven't you? There's nothing you can do about it. So I'm going to pull this out so that it's the right length. Measure it up. I think we're probably going to chop off about that much. My knife. We chop off about that much. You have to judge that by eye. We we'll put this in here now. I'm not terribly fussed about it because you'll see what I'm going to. Sorry, I'm not terribly fussed about it because you're going to see what I'm going to do to it in a minute. Um, I'll put it over the edges. Make sure there's nothing. Oh, for goodness sake, I will remember to put the clay in. The liquid clay. Pop it on. Always dodging the cat hair. <laughs> okay, there we go. That's in position now. It's got the liquid clay on it. I hope you got to see me do the liquid clay after all that. Very, very hard to work and look at the camera at the same time. There. And there. And I'm going to pretend that that is done. And now, just before I continue... Having done the uh, the three other three new tiles, I'm just going to blend those all in. Now this isn't neat here, but I'll sort it out later. I'm going to blend that all in by making sure that my gold is around the uh, all of the edge. And that's just to make sure that it's... Uh, Everything looks the same. Now I will need to make a hole. I'll need to make a hole to put my holly in. And I'm going to put that hole here. And I'm just going to cut out a hole with my craft knife. If you've got a nice little cutter that's small and round, that would be a good idea. I have actually, but... I'm using a knife for fun. <laughs> okay, there you go. Here's my holly, here's the hole, and I'm going to put a good old splodge of liquid clay into there and around the edges. And here goes my holly. Try not to get the gold on it. I'm wiping quite a lot of things on my trousers today. <laughs> If anyone knows how to get mica powder and liquid clay out of trousers, <laughs> leave your comments down below. Here's my holly and I'm settling it down. I wanted to make that hole because I want my holly to, to have some sort of, you know, to sort of be perked up. I don't want it to be too flattened in. And now I'm just going to sort of shape the leaves now. I'm sure you can make a better job of this. And if I feel that it looks a little bit gappy around the sides or whatever it looks as if it's going to be loose I will add in extra liquid clay around here until I'm satisfied and that is it and it looks really neat it looks fine 
on to the cooking. Now to cook my clay I can use some batting, some polyester batting um, that is oven friendly and I would probably put my ring into a little dip like this, this was quite a big dip that I've used for something else but you could put it into a dip like that and that would um, be ideal for cooking your clay or bake your clay it won't flatten out your design. If you were really um, you know in a bind and you didn't want to do that you could probably fold some card into a concertina I don't have any card here at the minute so I'm just going to quickly do it with some paper imagine if you folded some card into a concertina smash up everything and then you could perhaps lay it on a bit like that but the card would be <laughs> never demonstrate card without having card but yeah batting is ideal for this and just pick the middle out a bit so that you can set it on put that on a tile and then now we've got it finished we're going to bake this according to the manufacturer's instructions here's the finished product and i did of course give it a lick of varnish I hope you managed to follow that. I need to drive myself mad. <laughs> it's quite a lot of components. Um, good luck with it. Please, if you liked this, give me a big thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel. Leave any comments or questions down below. And I will see you again. Bye-bye.